A medical researcher believes that the average heart rate of smokers is greater than the average heart rate of non-smokers. She studies 80 people from each group and finds that the average heart rate for smokers was 98 and the average heart rate for non-smokers was 86. The standard deviation for both groups was 7. State the null and alternative hypotheses, find the p-value, and state your conclusion regarding the researcher's claim. You're then asked to select the best choice from the answers given below. First, you have to realize that there are two different groups that are being referred to in this problem, two different populations, and it's important to label which population is going to be population 1 and which population is going to be population 2 for your specific hypothesis test. Here I'm letting population 1 be the smokers and population 2 be the non-smokers. Now writing the claim, and since the researcher believes that the smokers have a heart rate that's greater than the heart rate of the non-smokers, the claim will be that the average for population 1 is greater than the average for population 2. Next we write the opposite of the claim, which will be that mu1 is less than or equal to mu2. The third step is to identify the null hypothesis which is in this case the opposite of the claim. And finally, the alternative hypothesis is the claim. In deciding which of the hypothesis tests we will use, going to stat and then the test menu, we see that only two of the choices involve two population means, numbers three and number four. And since both samples used in this study were more than 30, we will use number three, the two sample z test. Under the two sample z test, the input is not in the form of a data list, but is instead in the form of summary statistics. So we will select that's. The first two entries are the standard deviation for the two populations. We're given the standard deviation for both samples as being 7, and since the sample sizes were both more than 30, the number 7 will be a very good approximation at the standard deviation for the entire population, which is the sigma 1 and sigma 2. For population 1, x bar sub 1, the sample mean for population 1 was 98. The number in the sample was 80. For non-smokers, the sample average was 86. And the number of non-smokers in our sample was also 80. Coming to the symbol that we are to choose here, we go to the symbol found in the alternative hypothesis, the greater than symbol. And now when we go to calculate, when we go to the output screen, in making the decision about the null hypothesis, we primarily look at p-value. And here we see that p is equal to 1.11. However, p-value stands for probability value, which we know can't be more than 1. So, so continuing, we see the e negative 27, which means that this is, in fact, a very small number. Using scientific notation, we would be looking at a decimal which after the decimal point has 26 zeros and then the number 111. So this p-value is in fact zero for all intents and purposes. Using the p-value rule, if p-value is less than alpha, we reject the null hypothesis. In our case, the null hypothesis happens to be the opposite of the claim. Therefore, by rejecting the null hypothesis, we will be supporting the alternative hypothesis and therefore supporting the researcher's claim. Selecting the correct response here from the choices given means we need to look at the different null and alternative hypotheses given in the different choices, then also look at the p-value and see which one of the choices regarding the null hypothesis and the researcher's claim is true. If you carefully examine the choices given, you see that the fourth choice has the correct null and alternative hypotheses, has the p-value equal to zero, and the decision is to reject the null hypothesis and therefore support the researcher's claim, making choice four the correct choice for this particular problem.